And this statement is signed by the following uh, the International Forum on Globalization, the Advocates for Coalition of Development in Uganda, Africa International Foundation from Kenya, Amazon Alliance, Amazon Watch, Arid Lands Institute of Kenya, Center for International Environmental Law, Cultural Survival, Earth Rights International, Flying Eagle Women Fund, For Freedoms Foundation, Friends of the Earth, Global Exchange, Hawaii Institute for Human Rights, uh, Plutonium Free Future, Indigenous The Advocates Coalition for Development and Environment from Uganda, the Africa International Foundation for Kenya, Ghana, and East Africa, the Amazon Alliance, Amazon Watch in the United States, the Arid Arabs Institute of Kenya, the Center for International Environmental Law, Cultural Survival, Earth Rights International, the Flying Eagle Woman Fund, the Four Freedoms Foundation, Friends of the Earth in the U.S., Global Exchange, the Hawaii Institute for Human Rights, the Notia Plutonia Free Future from U.S. and Japan, the Indigenous Environmental Network from the U.S., International Funders of Indigenous Peoples, the International Network for Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, the International Rivers Network, the Missionary Oblades for Justice, Peace, and Integrity of Creation, Oceana Human Rights, Oil Change International, Oxfam America, Oxfam Australia, Rainforest Action Network, the Rigoberto Menchu Fund, Sierra Club, the Solidarity Foundation, Survival International, the Sustainable Energy and Economy Network, the Trans-Africa Forum, and the United Nations Association of the East Bay Chapter in California, and many, many other organizations who have set their support and their good heart to support these indigenous people from around the world. And we say, human rights hypocrite, John has come together in only a few weeks to address what we consider to be an appalling situation of human rights hypocrisy. The efforts of the governments of Canada, New Zealand, and Australia, all developed nations with long histories of activity in the United Nations. And for Canada, New Zealand, and Australia in particular, with no records on human rights. With this in mind, we are stunned by the efforts of the Australian government to derail and weaken one of the most important human rights documents to come before the United Nations since its founding in 1945. Some such as Australia, whose record has been abominable in terms of uranium mining and other extractive industries on traditional indigenous sacred lands. It is appalling to think that the government of Australia has proceeded all these years to disrespect and dishonor the rights of its own Aboriginal peoples. Peoples who have cared for that land and that place before any of us could possibly remember or ever hope to know. We are calling on these nations, and today in particular, on the governments of Canada, New Zealand, and right here, Australia, at their mission to the United Nations here on the streets of New York City to join the global non-governmental community, indeed the majority of governments in the world, in support of this declaration that is long overdue. It will never repair the unacceptable damage that has already been done to the Earth's first peoples. However, it will at the very least, and most importantly, afford them the rights, the future protections that will ensure that their essential governments, ways of life, and relationships to the earth will endure on into future generations. I'm Claire Greenswelder and I'm with the International Forum on Globalization and we are the secretariat for this coalition. The, the, the global situation on human rights in control. We, we are here today because we believe that the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is the way in which the future should be for the Indigenous Peoples around the world. Over 20 years ago, the United Nations realized that the indigenous peoples were the most oppressed peoples in the world, that we were oppressed because our lands and territories were colonized and we have never ever been decolonized since that period. We are oppressed because we are marginalized in society, because we suffer racial discrimination, because we are treated differently and because we are denied the delivery of services that we are entitled to as peoples in our own languages and recognition of our own systems, our own law, our own social order. 
We're here because countries around the world refuse to recognise their obligation to recognise the rights of Indigenous peoples under the existing human rights treaties. And we're here because we want to see a future based upon economic development but not on human rights and who are prepared to vote against the human rights instrument in the United Nations, an instrument already adopted by the Human Rights Council. They're prepared to vote against that instrument to keep the rights of Indigenous peoples oppressed in their own countries and elsewhere around the world. The obligation of these three countries, Australia, Canada and New Zealand, is to lead the world against the oppression of peoples and people's rights. It is to lead the world in relation to the link between security, economic development and human rights. And yet they have chosen to not play that role, to put on another mask and to use petty objections, petty complaints to continue in opposition against the declaration which we know now the United Nations is ready to accept. So we condemn these countries. And I particularly want to mention Australia's record on human rights on, Abri on an Aboriginal people in Australia. There has been no treaty signed with the Aboriginal people in Australia. Until 1967, just 40 years ago, the Australian Constitution did not recognise the existence of Indigenous peoples. In fact, there were two references. One to say that the Commonwealth Government could not pass laws for Aboriginal people, and the second one was to say that Aboriginal people will not be counted in the census. It took us until 1967 to get rid of these two discriminatory provisions in the Constitution. And yet, within 30 years, the Commonwealth Government used its newfound powers to create racial discrimination against Indigenous peoples. In 1998, it passed a law which limited the rights of Indigenous peoples to ownership of land and claim of control over our lands and resources. And it suspended the operation of the Racial Discrimination Act. So since 1998, in Australia, the Aboriginal people had no remedy and no recourse against racial discrimination in relation to our lands and territories. A few years ago, in 2005, the same government abolished the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island Commission, the national body consisting of 600 elected representatives to speak up for the rights of Indigenous peoples. The government says we will appoint our own advisers, we will not listen to the voice of Indigenous peoples. This is terrible history. This is racism. But it is not history of past years. As we speak, as we stand here outside the Australian mission, the Australian government has implemented national emergency laws to deprive the Indigenous peoples in the Northern Territory of their rights as human beings. It has taken back land that took us many years to fight under land rights and put it back into leases under government. It is taking the wages and the incomes of Indigenous peoples and is keeping it apart from those peoples. It is preventing Indigenous organisations from speaking up and defending the rights of Indigenous peoples. It is putting government people, including the police, including the army, in control of Indigenous remote communities in the Northern Territory. The same laws that they passed one week ago has that same clause. The, the Racial Discrimination Act shall not apply for Aboriginal people under these laws. We have no rights, we have no remedy, we have no excuse to go back in Australia to protect ourselves against this abuse of our human rights. So this is a government now, today, as they stand inside this building, as they stand up in the United Nations, are defying the basic human rights treaties of the United Nations. Six of the seven treaties on human rights, Treaty on Race Discrimination, the Treaty on Discrimination Against Women, the Treaty on the Rights of the Child, the Treaty on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, the Treaty on um, Civil and Political Rights. Each one of these treaties is currently being breached by this government against the Aboriginal people. Not the other Australians, but only the Aboriginal people are being denied these rights. And now this government wants to get up and play a role to stop the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People seeing the light of day. Shame on you, Australia. Shame, Australia. Shame. Thank you.